Hey guys, this is uh, Josh A. Loop, and uh, what you see before you is a test setup for uh, testing sound-powered elements for frequency response. These sound-powered elements are used um, on the, uh, the ships and submarines for uh, sound-powered communications. When all electrical um, you know, communication is knocked out, they still have a backup that does not require any uh, outside energy except for voice powered um, to, to allow them to communicate back and forth. And so uh, with crystal radios, uh, if you can get an element and uh, determine the frequency response as found and then adjust it and, uh, and then monitor the frequency response post adjustments and also uh, the uh, audio output as, as far as volume is uh, concerned, um, that can really give you a real nice diagnostic tool to ensure that your sound-powered elements are performing um, as best as they can uh, because with crystal radios um, every uh, microwatt of power that you have coming in if you can make effective use of that you can uh, gain a copy on a station ID um, that you may not uh, normally be able to get and so uh, to that end, um, I've done some research in the past and kind of had a hi hiatus away from uh, crystal radios and uh, away from uh, sound powered element adjusting. Um, and, uh, you know, we've had different things going on, uh, you know, in life that uh, took me away from that. But I want to get back into it and I have some uh, elements that I need to get adjusted for some folks uh, that are within the crystal radio community. And so, um, you know, after uh, after that hiatus uh, of being, uh, after getting frustrated with the results I was uh, getting or not getting with the result, the uh, elements before, it's uh, time now to jump back into it and see uh, with my, um, my increased knowledge, maybe I can uh, figure this out. And so uh, just because the elements uh, weren't giving me the results I needed before, uh, I'm not going to let it get me down. I'll jump right back in and uh, we'll get this uh, figured out. So what we're going to do, as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and find out what the frequency response of this particular sound powered element is before any adjustments are made. Now this is a uh, United States Instrument uh, Corporation USIC um, UA1614 and this is actually out of an old David Clark sound powered headset. And so the diagnostic tools we're going to use to allow this to happen are two. One of them um, being on the upper left hand side of the screen if you can see it is called Spectrum Lab version 2.77 and that's the uh, beta 22 version. And that actually gives us a scrolling display just like you see on the screen and it will show you what the frequency response picked up by the microphone installed is getting. Um, now my screen right now is set up to um, give us between 0 Hertz and 5000 uh, kilohertz or 5 kilohertz I should say and so that's what we've got it set up to and let me see if I can get this thing to behave there we go okay so we got uh, down at the bottom we've got zero Hertz and uh, at the very top uh, here we've got five kilohertz and I mentioned we were going to um, use another tool and that tool happens to be this one and that is the audio sweep gen version 3.5.4.29 and that allows you to um, use your computer to generate audio outputs. As you can see, um, you can go high frequency speech, um, you can go low frequency custom sine square wave, uh, you can do all kinds of interesting things. And we're going to use this to put out a white noise, uh, which is a wideband white noise. And so we have the white noise box checked and also the uh, wide 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz checked and so when we turn that on which we'll do here in a few minutes um, we will uh, be able to use that to inject audio into our sound powered element on the right hand side which actually sits directly above the computer speaker 
So that's going to couple the audio from our sweep gen, which is white noise, into our um, sound powered element. From the sound powered element, the uh, results are going to display in the Spectrum Lab audio, um, the audio uh, display. And so we'll be able to resolve what the frequency response is of that particular element. Now again, all this is uh, going to be done to get a baseline or an as found of this particular element before any adjustments are going to be made. Now, in sound powered elements, there's two key factors. One is frequency response. Um, we want to make sure that we um, retain the same frequency response um, and do not decrease any uh, volume um, among those particular audio frequencies. And we also want to do our best to increase the sensitivity just as much as we possibly can. We want this to respond to the very uh, most faint of electrical signals. And so what we'll go ahead and do now is uh, we'll go ahead and start our white noise. And I will plug in the microphone for our sound powered element. And uh, we will see uh, the results displayed. So let's go. Okay, so right now, as you can see, it's scrolling across the screen, and this is our audio frequency band. So I will go ahead and uh, remain silent for just a second. We'll see what it produces. So about 153 Hz to about 1.8 kilohertz. And that is um, ballpark-ish. So um, go ahead and just connect our element. And uh, so what we've done is injected our audio signal and we've used our computer to resolve what the frequency response of this particular element is. Now um, on the fly here we'll just go ahead and uh, try another element. Um, this is also from a David Clark sound powered headset. And um, you know what, before we do that, let me go ahead, I'm going to switch these leads around. And we're going to see if there's any difference in frequency response with the element wired in a different configuration. Okay. Okay. And once again we're going to go ahead and um, start our white noise. And that frequency response looks um, quite different to me. 187 to 12 to 12. That's really hard to tell. Around 2 kilohertz, uh, give or take. And that, to me, that to me is extremely interesting. Once again, we'll go back to the prior configuration. And we'll try this again. And it is, it's very different. So it appears that this particular element has an affinity for being hooked up in a certain uh, 
electrical configuration. In this one, we have the best and loudest response between about 600 and 1.8 kilohertz. And uh, the previous previous configuration, switching the leads, gives this type of response. So it appears that it uh, narrows that band. Honestly, I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's what a lot of this is about, is, uh, is about learning and, uh, you know, discovering new things. So there's something to be said about, um, you know, polarity uh, as far as the elements are concerned. Now, let's go ahead and test another uh, element from a David Clark uh, sound powered headset. Now this one is actually from Sound Powered Communications and it is a plastic um, shell and it is a newer model of the uh, David Clark. I think it's the H5040 sound powered model. So let's go ahead and hook this up and determine what the audio um, frequency response is of it. And we'll go ahead now that we got the element hooked up. We'll start on our uh, white noise. So I'm going to call that one about 1.75, 1.8, um, down to about 161. And the um, darkest bands happening at about 586 to 1.6 kilohertz. Now let's go ahead and reverse that connection and let's see if we have the same result as we had with the previous unit. Start at a white noise. It's kind of difficult to tell which one is better. That one seems to be a narrow band. This one seems to be a wide band. Wider, I should say. So, um, very interesting results. I can't say that I have this completely figured out in my mind how this all works. Um, but I do know that these couple uh, computerized tools can help uh, allow a person to get a good feel on the audio uh, frequency response of their sound powered elements and then you can make intelligent choices on what to do with that element from there whether it be adjusting uh, whether it be changing the acoustic coupling to um, to your ears or inside the uh, the can that the uh, the element is mounted in all that makes a difference in the frequency response um, you know and if you can determine what the initial frequency response is you can design your um, audio impedance matching side um, with cavities and so forth to suit 
and to um, best support the uh, initial um, frequency response of the sound powered element. So hopefully uh, you found this interesting. Uh, I'm going to continue on doing my best to learn. I've learned a couple things today, uh, as you have, so it's kind of nice to do that in real time and, and just kind of have a head scratching moment and uh, you know figure out why in the world that that made a difference on switching the uh, uh, the phase. I guess it would be called of that audio. So uh, very interesting. We'll continue to work on this as time permits. And uh, until next time, enjoy and uh, you know keep listening to those uh, those airwaves. All right, catch you guys later.